Good morning. Today we look at Acts chapter 15, verses 22 through 41. Um, and just a reminder, tomorrow morning uh, we have worship at Mabel in Sutton at 9 o'clock and our Savior is in McHenry at 10.30. You're welcome to join us live at 9 from Mabel or in person at either worship service. Um, today's reading... Uh, Follows, I mean, yesterday we had the, the division, you know, of, of how they were uh, different teachings that way and, and the conversation that the church leaders then had about it. And verse 22 says, Then the apostles and the elders, with the consent of the church, decided to choose men from among their members and to send them with Ant to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, along with a letter uh, stating that some of these that had been there telling them these things were, I mean, you, you don't need to listen to that. You don't need to be circumcised. You don't need to do all of this, but, you know, the, the letter finishes up, you know, with abstain from what has been sacrificed from idols and from blood and from uh, what is strangled and from fornication. You know, so you'll know, stay away from these sins. Believe in the Holy Spirit, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And, you know, that's the most important thing. You know, this other stuff really isn't going to get in the way of your relationship with God or your salvation. So they, you know, they sent this letter, you know, and it, you know, the, you know, it starts out the brothers and the sisters, both the apostles and the elders, you know, so it's, we're all in agreement with this. And they send the greetings and, you know, we have heard that certain people have gone out with no instruction from us. You know, they just gone out on their own. And, and, and that's, you know, one of the things that we, we sometimes see today, we haven't heard a lot recently about, you know, some, uh, self-proclaimed savior or, you know, uh, some of these cults that, you know, just really pull people in. But I, you know, I remember the, the Moonies when I was, you know, growing up and, you know, the Branch Davidians and, you know, many others that, that come with these false teachings and people get wrapped up in them. You know, they get, they, they get, uh, they get so involved with it that they, you know, they're not seeing the real and true light. And, and so, um, and some of these are, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're preaching their, their own agenda, you know, not, not the true agenda of God. And, and, and so this is one of the things that, that they're, these the, the the church leaders are saying is that these people weren't instructed to do that. They don't have the you know the, the the training. They don't have they don't have the backing of the church. And and so often you know that's so true as well. But you know they're sending them out along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, who have risked their lives for the sake of Jesus Christ. And, and they did. I mean, Paul had been stoned and and taken out and thought dead, you know, they, you know, they, they continue to preach and, you know, they've been imprisoned and under the threat of law and punishment that way, but yet they continue to preach for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so verse 30 says, they were sent off and went down to Antioch and gathered the congregation together. And, and when its members read it, they rejoiced, you know, they were, they were glad to hear, you know, that what, Paul and Barnabas had been teaching and, and instructing them was, was true. They didn't need to go through the, the, the ritual process of some of the other things. And, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting, but, you know, this letter that we just, you know, just talked about is referred to again in chapter 21, uh, you know, that showing that, you know, Paul was informed of this letter. Well, I mean, here Paul... Uh, knows that letter. So maybe the one that I read a reference to in, maybe I, it, is different, but it's, you know, the, the church leaders in Jerusalem were, you know, they were kind of the home office, so to speak, you know, and, and, you know, it was where the majority of the apostles, the original 12 were, and, and, and the original believers and followers of Jesus. And, you know, most of them, of course, were Jews and, and they had some authority and, and some 
um, guidance, some oversight over the church. But the people of Antioch rejoiced when they when they read this letter and and um, and Paul, Barnabas, Silas, and and uh, Judas uh, stayed there. And this isn't, of course, Judas Iscariot. It's not him. It's a, a different Judas. But um, after they had been there teaching and and being in the presence of these people, and this is, I think, so important as well, being with them, you know, and staying with them, uh, getting to know them, and being a part of, of their community, and a part of their lives. And and this is one of the reasons that, you know, that Paul writes letters back to these people later on. And these are the letters we have, you know, First and Second Corinthians and Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, you know, Romans is a letter that Paul wrote to, you know, and, and so they, they developed this relationship of trust and guidance. And, and so that when, when Paul later or Peter as well writes some letters and John writes some letters, but, you know, when... When they write the letters back to them, explaining things, uh, challenging them, correcting them, the people are a little bit more apt to to hear, to listen, to see the error of their ways, and you know to to turn back to to God that way. But they spent time with them, and then uh, Paul and Barnabas stayed there in Antioch, but uh, Silas and Judas uh, returned. Uh, and then later on, uh, Paul says to Barnabas, let's return and visit the believers that we've already been to. So this is going to be the start of his second missionary journey. And Paul and Silas have, uh, Paul and Barnabas rather, have a little disagreement because Barnabas wants to take John Mark with them. Uh, we, we were introduced to in chapter 12 and 13. But Paul feels that John Mark deserted them. I mean, and if you read back, I mean, when when I read it back in chapter 12 and 13, you know, it simply says, you know, John Mark returned to Jerusalem. I mean, it does, doesn't talk about any, you know, desertion or, you know, even discrepancy or, you know, that Paul wanted him to go with or anything that way. But Paul had it in his head that, that John Mark um, had deserted them in, in their mission, that, you know, he should have gone, but he chose not to. And and so there was this disagreement now between Paul and Barnabas. And, um, you know, it, it's just, you know, it's it, it's just one of those sad things that, you know, we, we don't we don't all see exactly the same. And even then when we're talking about working together for the good of, of everybody, you know, we have these disagreements in our church. We have disagreements in our leaders. And, and I just, I saw a, a little deal uh, that, you know, they were talking about, you know, Jesus is Lord and Savior, and he came to save us, and, and it's, oh, hey, we got this down, and then they turn, and, oh, here come the religious leaders, I mean, <laughs> you know, the, or the, you know, the ones that are, you know, more learned, and they're going to throw a wrench into things, and, you know, we get those wrenches thrown into things, but the disagreement between Paul and Silas, or Paul and Barnabas, rather, says, and became so sharp that they departed company. Barnabas took Mark with him and sailed to Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas and set out with the believers. And as, as I read just a few verses earlier, it sounded to me like, you know, Silas and Judas had gone back to Jerusalem, but Silas is still there, so others had gone back to Jerusalem. It, it's, it, it just doesn't all fit together real neatly, you know, in, in, a, in a package. Uh, so we, you know, we, we got to just kind of put it all together. So, but Paul chose Silas and they set out on this second missionary journey. And it says the believers commending him to the grace of the Lord. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. So, um, you know, some of your Bibles may have maps in the back and and uh, like shows like what Paul's first missionary journey and his second missionary journey and and you know the cities and the and the communities that they went to. But but it's just a reminder to us that you know as as they go on these journeys, you know they're they're on foot, they're in in boats, they're uh, maybe that. 
Anyway, sorry for I guess we're going to be done. Have a good day, and I'll see you tomorrow morning.